Lovely new apartments, find that's normal business for you now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, a little bit already. Yeah, um, yeah, just found about 12 days out. Um, and uh, yeah, look, the confidence is there anyway, you know what I mean, just from the training. So, I mean, it doesn't really matter the, the uh, of course, obviously it matters the opponent, but as uh, far as the training leading up to an Alaba, I was actually probably getting, he's more of a conventional fighter, he's easier to prepare for, you know, he's very good at what he does do. But uh, yeah, definitely easier to prepare for, prepare for in that sense. But uh, yeah, like I said, uh, the confidence was there anyway, so I was just glad they got someone in. You couldn't play down, but it's the first time at all for you? And the family was on? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. It is a little bit, yeah. You just wonder what these lads are doing, like two weeks out, and, and uh, look, maybe the injuries coming into whatever. But uh, anyway, yeah, it's just, just a bit frustrating now, right? Yeah, because in fairness, at this time, the, the last time they put the foot to shit, somebody a little bit, you know what I mean? But this time it was. Uh, they, um, yeah, they straight away had an opponent ready, ready to go, so it was grand, you know. In terms of yourself, you know, you've already started to have a pretty good share quite close to quite healthy than this time? Yeah, fresh, fresh air, uh, all's good now, so thank God, yeah. Um, last time coming into it, it's, oh, it's a neck injury, broken nose before the fight. Uh, I didn't know that it was until after it, uh, when I got the scans and all that. Like, they were like, oh, you're. They did a routine brain scan, and they were like, oh, your brain's already right, broken nose. I was like, oh. Knows it they have, but uh, courtesy of Pedro Cavallo actually. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so all fresh now going into this one, yeah. And the build up to this fight slightly different than last year. You had a big back bench behind you, uh, your, your friend Jamie called you around. Is it a bit more low key, a bit more like focusing on yourself? Yeah, it's a bit of a modern, yeah. It's just, um, he's actually meeting me there today, like, as I said, it became friends through, but uh, yeah, like. N no camera system around, you know, so it's uh, definitely a little bit easier already. And uh, yeah, obviously that's added pressure as well. Would have been uh, if I would have to do another take if we had a little loss, you know, the way. So uh, yeah, no, it was good. It was good. And uh, to drop the crowd up against Yeah, of course, it's always um, just every time consistently, just bringing two, three hundred people, and it's uh, it's just unreal, you know what I mean? And uh, like I said, talking with another reason, more reasons to win. That's another reason, and uh, it's added pressure, of course. But uh, yeah, looking to make a six now in the three arena. Obviously, you get the, the seven, but this will be sixth one in there, you know. So. Does that one beat record behind you arrived in the last two years? Has it raised the game? MMA got me up to the SVGs there now. Do you notice yourself without just the town and the streets? Yeah, a little bit already. Yeah, you kind of. I don't know you're ordering a coffee or something. Your man shanty as if he knows you, and you know things of like that, and then. You know, as far as uh, the gyms and that, I mean, yeah, like, you know, you do know, it's like, you might get the odd message and, you know, this lad, this lad training away and he's saying, ah, seeing you coming up and, um, you know, so, no, it's brilliant, yeah, it's, look, as I said, if I can be a positive light in any way to the town or anywhere, I mean, I suppose, when I mean, it's all said and done, as I said, it could be 20 now, but, you know, if you're not a good person and, uh, you know, I can look back and say, you know what, people are saying that to me, you know, so that's great. Your chain of opponent there, he has 10, win 10 submission wins and his 11 victories. When you have the chain of opponent and you see something like that standing on his record, is there any temptation to maybe not take the fight or is there something you have to adjust in that period? No, no, like John actually sent it to me and uh, obviously had a look to, he had a look together and gave his opinion, but he was like, make sure you look at the fight because uh, look at his fights because like John will tell you, like as soon as he sends someone within two, three minutes, I'm just saying yes, like I just. It's just like, I'm here on Bellator now, you know what I mean? It's like, I'm not looking, you know, to build a record to get to, you know, the big shows around I'm here now, you know, so, and uh, I think I think that shows as well. I think, you know, I'm on the main card. I never said no to a fight, and I uh, just take take the fights as is. But yeah, like, looking looking at that, like, and that was the first thing John said. I always look at the fights. Look, but John said, I, I always look at the record first. And uh, yeah, that kind of probably give you a bit of a mindset behind uh, maybe what John would, would have said to me, but, uh, yeah, I looked at the fights and he looked at the record and yeah, we were happy enough and went from there then, you know. Speaking of John, he called you the, the perfect representation of MMA inside and outside the cage. We spoke there with the, the documentary and you gave your feed to the charity, it was the, the Save Our Sons and Daughters charity. How important is it for you to be you know, a role model, a positive figure outside of the cage or be as much as inside? Yeah, look, to be honest, I'm just being myself really, you know. It's, it's not really hard, you know, to be like, you know, I'm just being me really, to be honest. Now, don't get me wrong, I definitely do have that uh, in the back of my mind, you know, like, you have that responsibility now, you know, of course, but uh, as I said, it's not it's not that hard because I've just been myself, really, and, uh, yeah, maybe, you know, uh, as I said, when it's all said and done, to have that, you know, to the likes of John saying that, the likes of anyone else, so it's a privilege to, 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 for that to be said about you, you know. Obviously, you have European and world amateur experience as well. 
we're kind of seeing a shift to that now. How important do you think it is to have that you know big amateur background before you turn pro, rather than people rushing into the pro? Yeah, look, I just I think that those days are gone there now. Um, I think you know having the big amateur experience and uh, you know it's a massive thing for me. Like you know, and again, like I'm, I have six consecutive wins in Bellator. At the minute, I think of the tour. That's the tour uh, most consecutive wins in the whole promotion at the minute. And, you know, if I make it seven, I'm not sure what where, what, where it'll put me. But like, you know, you look at my amateur record, and it's 13 wins, 11 losses. And again, you look at the record, the numbers. But if you actually dig deep into that record, you see the the fighters and fighting. A lot of them doing well at pro now. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, like it was just it was just all experience for me, you know. And at the time, you don't want to hear that, you know. It's all experience, and it's the worst thing you want to hear. But for me, it was literally just all experience. And again, as I said, the goal was to be world champion, European champion at the at the IMAPS. But uh, yeah, um, it was just all experience in the end. Look, what, um, you know, as Artem Lovac says, uh, I don't know if he's been chatting to him, but he says uh, your pro record goes on your gravestone, you know. So that's the truth, <laughs> like, you know. Appreciate um, that. Thanks. Thanks. Kieran, you mentioned the undefeated record there and, and the street that you're on within Bellator. When do you see yourself taking that next step? Peter Queeley talked recently that he, he thought maybe that it might be time or coming to uh, coming time soon uh, to getting like a top ten opponent or a ranked opponent. Is that something you're thinking of? Um, look, to be honest, it's as you all know, he's all had plenty of interviews with me. I don't like looking too far ahead of, of this man to be on Saturday. Tough challenge, you know. He's ten with ten uh, wins by submission. He's a tough lad. And, and uh, but yeah, look, you know, if I get this win, we'll see what happens. I definitely the goal, I suppose, for this year would be definitely get one abroad, whether it be I don't know, you know, somewhere else in Europe or whatever, but to, to hopefully make it to America, um, you know, then maybe have the Dublin one at the end of the year. But that's the goal, like you know, I think I want to get established there and you know have have one outside of uh, Dublin, and I don't just be the token Dub Irish guy, you know, I mean, just find Dublin twice a year, and you know, I want. Obviously, it's brilliant, you know, of course, but like, you know, again, this is my sixth one here, it's the fourth one in a row, so I want to, you know, I want to get another fight hopefully in the summer and that make a three year. But as far as the rank, it's fine, someone rank, like, I, I feel I'm only starting, like, which I am, like, I know I'm three, four years into the pro career, but like, you know, uh, I just want to, if, if they feel I'm worthy, I'm going to, like, I'm that type of person, I'm not going to say no, you know, so I just want to keep climbing the ranks the right way and, uh, yeah. See what happens. A few of your teammates were saying that they've got US visas now and the possibilities are there to fight abroad. Do you have one also? Uh, no, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, it wouldn't be hard because actually my uh, my uh, mum is born in America. So uh, I don't know how that would actually work if, if uh, that would even matter or anything. But yeah, so uh, get me over to my family there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you swapped uh, fight shorts and rash guards for a nice black tux there at your, uh, your premiere recently. Yeah. Your documentary. What was that experience like? Yeah, that was unreal. It was... It was uh, something else to be honest it was definitely kind of it was obviously different you know what I mean you're sitting there watching yourself and your life and you're like, sitting there Jesus it's kind of boring you know what I mean you're thinking <laughs> but then everybody else is around you laughing and all that and I'm like no way they find that funny you know what I mean no. you know so things like that was great and uh, yeah as I said the rate, I, I was, wasn't was on for it at all the whole idea of the talks and all that crap I was like you're mad like and then when the charity was thrown up I said you know what look for James Sherry to done it for, for Manifest Media, I was like, you know what, this is his fight night, so, you know, I want to give him the his show, and, you know, the boy, and then it was up for charity then, you know, so, we raised five and a half grand early, you know, so, so, uh, I was buzzing with that, like, you know. Your wins and performances have been uh, incredible, in, in the sense that they're <coughs> incredibly eventful also. Yeah. Um, you've had to come through adversity, and you've shown that you've been able to. Coming into this fight, is that a conversation that you and John have been having where maybe, you know, hoping that this is a, a less eventful fight, yeah, no, definitely. Like, I mean, you know, just looking back on them, um, I'm, I've learned a lot, and it's not like the skills, the skill set has like, has massively jumped. Obviously, it's only been a few months, but I really feel what I've been cooking up the last few years since I've gone pro. I want to be able to really show that, and just not 100% happy with that yet, as in the performances in there, you know. And I just want to get comfortable there and really show the improvements that I've been making since turning pro and. And uh, the fighter I really am, you know, the way the lads that all know me in the gym, and I really want to bring that into the cage on uh, Saturday, you know. So, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely uh, want to be and make it an easier one, you know. But that's the way it is. I think, I think it could be a first round job, like you know, that I just really go out there and storm the ladder, or it could be back and forth exchanges, and you know, and obviously, I'll be seeing myself coming out on top. But uh, yeah, obviously, that's the plan, you know.
There's obviously a few guys from the gym um, fighting on this card. Does that change how the camp feels and how the card feels to you? Yeah, big time. Like training away with all the boys, you know, all of us training together. Um, you know, it's a different buzz gym. I always mention this when I first joined SPG with the yellow mats and the whole been a part of the, the UFC rise of the, for the, of the lads, like, you know, the likes of Connor, Rash, Paddy, uh, Chris Fields, Carl Pendry, you know, all them boys were all training the mats at the time, Gordon Nelson coming over, and, like, you know, you were an amateur back then, and, like, that's what you were looking up to and striving to be. And, uh, yeah, now it's kind of like our turn, you know, with the, with the Bellator crew, like, you know, all of us, like, the likes of Richie Smullen and, you know, Pedro, obviously, and uh, leading the way, I suppose, you know, uh, him being uh, ranked opponent and, um, you know, like it's it's all it's all um, it's all it's all brilliant, you know, and it's we're all coming up together, you know, the boy. Obviously, you're six and zero now. That's a pretty impressive record. What's the lesson that you've learned from the last few fights that you've had that you're taking into this one? Um, just keep doing what I'm doing. What I mean by that is, is uh, my mentality is I'm zero and zero. You know, like that. I'm, I'm the underdog always. You know, that's that's my mentality because I feel if I if I start, you know thinking of this or that or start really getting into that, I really feel that's when, you know, I think that's when fighters go down, you know, it's it's not the sprint to the top of the hill, you know what I mean, it's it's actually when you're on the hill, you know what I mean, that's when it matters, you know what I mean, because the sprint, it's, you know, as it says, anyone who's put just here and there and make the sprint, for, you know, he'll do it, but it's when you're on that hill at the top of it, that's when you keep going, so that's just my mentality, I'm just trying to keep that, keep that uh, momentum, keep that mentality, it's just, uh, yeah, just, you know, I'm zero and zero every time, and I'm just uh, keep 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 it going. Hopefully, start to get another win. So there'll be no fighters getting called out after this fight. No, nah, no, no. Look, everyone knows. As I said, uh, you know, I, I fight anyone, and uh, yeah, like you know, put the put put the paper in front of me, say it to Jude, and uh, I'm gonna sign it. You know, if they if that's the opponent, that's the opponent. Like you know, as I said, I'm in Bellator here. I'm on main cards. I'm you know fighting alongside world champions and. and you know, so like I'm here now. It's not as if I have to build a record to get there. So, Thanks very much, lads.